In the Himalayas, I didn't know much about anything. If people went, I just went. Sometimes I had to walk alone because they walked a different way and they walked so fast. <laughs> and I'm alone with just a stick and a sleeping bag would get heavier and heavier because the rain soaked into it. Also, the road was difficult and I was going upward. But I was happy. I, I did not think too much about anything. I was just walking, keep going, you know, to find a pilgrimage area, to find any master to teach me something. I keep searching, looking, walking. It was a very hard time, but I never thought it was hard. I never for one second thought it was a hard time. Only now telling you, I remember that it could be described as hard time, yeah? Well, for me, it was not. In India, you should never walk alone. Woman, you should never walk alone like that. You will be in danger any time. Because the men will think of you like a bad woman. And you're looking for trouble if you walk alone. At that time, when I went there, I didn't think much. I was just looking for God. And even if I heard that sometimes, and some men wanted to take me home, to take care, to protect me and all that, I just said, no, 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 I'm okay. I never feel fear or anything. I didn't realize there was too much danger. You know, people say, love makes blind. I was sort of in love with enlightenment, with God, with Master, that I could not even realize what it was. And God protected me. I think God in heaven thought, this woman, she's so stupid, so stupid and so stubborn. So we would really have to take care of her because she knows nothing. She doesn't care about danger or all that stuff. We have to protect her. I guess that's how. Some people rode on horse people whenever the horse person can be afforded or can go. But they look at me with pitiful eyes. I didn't understand why, you know? Because it's not always safe when you ride a horse person. I saw the horse people sometimes slip on the ice and some woman, man, slip from the ice and all that. Oh, I was all protected. Thank God. Even after all these years, I didn't realize how dangerous it was. And that's why many people who went on pilgrimage to the end of the Himalayas, like I did, people worship them, thinking that they are God's beloved, and prostrate to them and all that. When I went back to one of the ashrams, I just uh, picked up one piece of uh, discarded uh, English newspaper. It was rare, you know, so English. So I pick it up and read. I sit uh, on the stair steps uh, and then read it. And one of the elderly men with long, long white hair over his stomach and his eyebrows, everything was white. And he wore white turban, white clothes. He looked so like a master, you know, like a saint. He came and prostrated it to me. Oh, I was so scared, <laughs> so scared. I throw the newspaper and run away. <laughs> I forgot, I should have asked him why, but I never asked. I was so scared. I thought, what is he doing? Why prostrate in front of an unworthy woman? So anyway, to be a master is destined by heaven and God, okay? Only when God truly tells you and you know how to protect yourself from falsehood or your master designates you, to go to certain area to give initiation for how many people she already knows or he has already been reported to. And you rely on your master's power. She has already been reported to about the number of people and where they're from, their age, their name and everything. Yes. Only if the master appointed you, you go there. Then you know you go there. That's it. You're not a master. You just carry the information. That's why we call these monks and nuns in my group Kuan Ying messengers, and they know the rules. So if you're not trained in it, there are some deep rules you don't know. They are not there just to be a fake master who enjoys offerings. They're not, because I forbid them to take anything at all. So everything they use from anybody, they have to pay. I pay for them. Of course, they also don't have money. We make money, we use it together anyway, so it doesn't matter. Not like they have their own money. And nowadays, only when they have to go abroad and they need a credit card, then no matter, they have it. 
And when they go there, they have to pay for everything. Whatever they use from the initiates, they must pay. Not one cent left unpaid. You know all that. If you talk to my leftover residents, monks and nuns, you know that. They all know that. Only the ones who are left now, who didn't go out for fame and name to be a fake guru, whatever, married or anything, they keep to all these principles and they're pure. Those who left the monkhood for any reason, none of them has reached beyond the third world yet, so they're not completely liberated. Perhaps they have to return to human life one more time if their heart is not purified. And if they still remember and pray to the Master and return to their diligent practice, then their level still could be high, but it's difficult. Once you renounce your own ideal just to earn your own pleasure and for mundane profit, then it's very difficult to climb back again. Hmm? It doesn't matter. Everyone has hope. Everyone must try their best. That's what it is, okay? And I hope that if you don't practice and you don't get out this time, then next time maybe if you go to any other planet, you might meet a good master again and practice again. I truly... At this moment, in this lifetime, I do not want to come back to this planet again. Not like this, no. No, it's truly too much work, too much loss and gaining, very little. And you could die any time, leaving other good disciples often. It's not fair, you know. I can't suffer that much anymore. And seeing all the suffering around me, it's like I'm in hell all the time. The practitioner should be blissful, happy, blessed, improving all the time. Yeah, they all do. Most of my disciples do, only I don't. They take it all from me and then they enjoy. But it's good so. Not that I don't want to give. Just what I mean is that what for so many people, oh, the majority don't believe, don't know anything, don't listen to anything. Even your own people, you rescue them from refugee camps. You take nothing from them and then turn it around against you. Yeah, making terrible things, doing wrong things, claim themselves as a master, do wrong things against all my principles and make other people misunderstand my teaching even more and make more people run away from my teaching. And thus, they could not get liberation. And so the karma is immense, and it goes for like change. It's no good. That's no good, not fair at all. I just hope things will get better. So I have to work a lot, a lot, a lot. And as long as I'm here on the planet, I promise you I spare nothing to save this world and to save the people's physical lives as well as their souls. That's all I can tell you. I promise you. I don't dare say much. Whatever, you know, is in the heavens, the plan. You should not disclose too much when it comes to the big picture. When you disclose something small like, oh, some uh, president will die by assassination, some people will become president against all odds this year, next year, that is not too much. But if you disclose the big, great, heavenly plan for the whole of humankind, and all other beings, such as animal beings on this planet, then you do. And your prediction might be crushed. And people will look down upon you, thinking, oh, before she predicted all right, and now she predicted all wrong. No, I want to clear their names. All the truly sincere and clairvoyant, unconditional people, they predicted everything right for our planet, especially at this time or some years ago, before 2024, all the way up to 2012, all the way up to 2012. They all did say the right thing. It could be like that. A disaster could be for humankind. Fire could come from heaven. A flood could rise, you know, even cover all the mountains, like that. Because God can do everything. God can make that happen. God can make the water run up 
cover all the mountains and submerge all humankind and everything that they have been working hard for. It could happen like that. It's just thanks to heaven, thanks to all the masters, past, present, and even future, helping with their power because they are everywhere. They're not just in physical bodies. They're also in non-physical bodies, and they help also without us seeing. We have to thank all of them. And we have to clear the names of all the clairvoyants, especially the new ones, like Baba Vanga. Like uh, Mr. Hamilton Parker. They call him modern Nostradamus. He's English. He predicted the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and many other things that came true. Even President Trump's assassination attempt, for example. And he also said that he knows that there is a group of people who are the heroes, unsung heroes, who will rescue this planet and save the people. But he just doesn't know who that is. <laughs> Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những